Hi guys, I am Luan Skiags and welcome to the channel. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're returning back, welcome back. Now, last week I made this mirror and if you guys haven't seen it, it would be linked after this video. Now, today I'm going to be making a matching side table. So if you guys would like to see a matching side table to go with this mirror, then come with me and let's get started. Now to get started, these are the different colored plates that it has. It have the silver, the red, the blue and the gold. Now I'm going to be using the silver because I already used that for the mirror and I want to have a matching side table. So someone said in the comment section down below that they couldn't get the pieces to come out even. So I made this template and you guys could download it for free in the comment section down below. Normally my patterns are available for free for the first 48 hours but for this pattern it would always be free. It's just a star with some lines going through it so you guys could download it whenever you want and it would be free. So we'll cut out the star from our paper, we'll place it in the middle of our plate and we'll line up the piece. Now once you have it lined up, we'll just cut along these lines. Now we'll cut it right up to this point. We don't want to separate the paper because we want to be able to use it again to cut all the pieces that we need. All the shapes doesn't have to be completely the same, that is fine. Once you push it in between the pieces, it would all look the same. Once you cut it like this, all you have to do is take your scissors and cut through to the middle. Once you didn't cut your piece all the way through, you could take it and put it on your next plate and continue cutting the pieces. We'll be using diamond wrap to go around some of the edges of the plates. You could also pick this up at the Dollar Tree. To glue it on to the edge of the plates, we'll be cutting them into strips of twos. Once we have our strips cut, we'll measure how much we need for around the edges and we'll cut the pieces to match. And to make it easier, once we have our first piece, we could use that to measure and cut all the rest of the pieces that we need. We want the strips to go around this curve, so we'll bend our diamond wrap in half and we'll cut it down until the halfway point. This will make sure that it would be able to bend nicely around the edges. Now we'll glue the diamond wrap onto the edge of our plates. Now once we have all our pieces prepared, we could stick them onto our cardboard. Now we'll take our cardboard and we'll measure it. We'll fold the tape in half to find the center point and we'll mark it on our cardboard. You could take any small round circle and use that to make the half of circle on your cardboard. We are drawing this half of circle so that we have something to reference when we are sticking on our pieces. We'll cut the first piece to fit and we'll stick it onto the cardboard in the middle to start our design. For the sides, we'll cut the piece in half like this and we'll use the two halves on the two sides of our design. We'll start the second row with the bling wrap pieces. We'll cut it to fit and we'll stick it between here. We want to make sure that these two points is underneath the first row. Then we'll push it in place and make sure that it's well set. Now we'll continue cutting and gluing the pieces in place. When we get to the sides, sometimes we'll have to cut the pieces in half and sometimes we would be able to use it whole. You'll just fit it in place depending on what it needs. Thank you. 
I'm starting the third row with the plain pieces. Now you could do the whole entire table with the plain pieces or the glitter pieces or however you want to mix it up. It is completely up to your preference how you design and put the pieces together. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine's as long as you like it then that is completely fine. Now I'll continue gluing on the pieces and then I'll come back. When I got to the end of my poster board, I had 9 rows all together. So if you are using something other than a poster board, that's how much rows I did. Now you could make yours as tall or as short as you want, this is just what I did. Then I turned it on the other side and I measured to get the halfway point again. And then I glued on 5 rows going in this direction. When you start putting the pieces to the top, you'll try your best to cover up all the spaces between the top and the bottom. So you'll put the pieces in and try to make sure that it fits in a really nice way. And then continue gluing on the rest of your pieces. Once we have all our pieces glued on, we'll cut out the extra cardboard. I'm going to be using these silver dessert spoons from the Dollar Tree. They come 24 in a pack and we'll be using the handle part of the spoons. Now it's easy to break, all we have to do is hold it right here and bend it. Now we'll put glue on the top and the bottom of our handles and we'll stick it in between our pieces. Now this part is completely optional. I just love the contrast between the two silvers. One looks like mirror and one looks like metal. And the two together, in real, it looks really nice. Now I'll continue gluing on the spoons and then I'll come back. Once we're done gluing on all of our handles, you could leave it like this. This is beautiful as is. But I'm going to do the same as I did for the mirror and I'm gluing on these gems that I picked up from the Dollar Tree on the top of all of the handles. We'll put glue on the back of the gems and we'll stick it on the top of the handles. I'll continue this all the way through and then I'll come back. Now that we finish gluing on all of our gems, we'll turn the piece over and I spray painted the both sides silver so if it shows to the back, you would see silver. I'll also cover up the cottage with diamond wrap. Now we'll measure our piece and we are measuring the outside part, not the cardboard because we want to get the exact half of what we'll see on the outside. Then we'll mark it in the middle. I'm using the scrap piece of cardboard that we cut off from the side and I'll be adding on to it so that we could get a rough draft of the half of our piece. Doing it this way and adding pieces as we need enable us to see the sides and know exactly how much we need in order to get the back of the table. We are going to take away about two to two and a half inch so that we know that the front would cover up the back. We'll continue measuring and cutting off all the extra pieces that we don't need. Once we're finished making up our stencil, we'll take it and draw it out on the cardboard, flip it over and draw the other side. 
we'll make two of these pieces. Now I'll be using some scrap pieces of wood in the inside to make it stronger but if you don't want to use wood you could use about five pieces of cardboard and stick them together and use that to make the piece stronger. I'll be gluing the wood onto the cardboard to make it easier so that the board won't move around when I'm trying to put in the screws. This is hot glue so it would help holding up the piece but it wouldn't hold it up entirely so I'll put something to hold the board up until I drill and put in the screws. I'll continue putting the piece together and then I'll come back. After I finished putting together the piece, the board below here was 15 inches long and the piece on the top is 35 inches long. You could make the pieces as long and as wide as you want to fit your space. You guys don't have to use board, you could use cardboard. Just double up on the cardboard so that it would be strong. To close up the sides, I've cut a piece of cardboard and I'm rolling it so that it would be pliable so it could bend around the side. We want to do that on both sides because we want it to be able to bend both back and forward. I tried using hot glue to put it together but this is not the easiest way. So I gave this up and I decided to use tape and that was much quicker and much easier to do. We'll continue taping on both sides to close up the table and then we'll come back. Once we have all our sides taped up, we'll start covering the sides with our pieces. To get the straight edge, we'll cut the pieces in half so that we could have the straight edge. Sometimes we'll have to cut it in half, sometimes we could leave it whole. As you keep going up with the pattern, you'll be able to tell where you'll have to have it cut or where you'll keep it whole. Now to cover up these triangle pieces, all we'll do is cut off the top piece and we'll stick that here to cover up these spaces. Now we'll continue sticking the pieces like this. We'll continue gluing the pieces all the way up the sides and in the back. When you get to the top of the table or anywhere that you have curves, one of the really nice things about doing it with these paper plates is that we could bend the paper plates around the edges. So to fill in all the rest of the spaces, we'll bend the pieces to match. Now we'll take these foam boards and they are one and a quarter inches wide. You could have yours as wide as you want or as narrow as you want, but I think that this is just a good width. It matches with the wall scone, so that's why I'm doing it this width. Now I'm going to be using some mirror reflective paper and covering the foam board. Now you want to use foam board instead of cardboard because the foam board have a smoother surface. And if you're going to put the mirror reflective paper onto a cardboard, it would show all of the ridges in the cardboard. So you want to use a smooth surface to put on the reflective paper. To make it easier, I'm lining up two of the foam board pieces and I'm going to cut the reflective paper right along that line. I'm also going to join all of the pieces together with tape. This will make it easier to stick on the reflective paper to all of them at one time. If you guys want to wrap all of your foam board individually so you won't see the white on the top of the foam board, then go ahead, that would be even better. Now we peel the reflective paper and stick it onto the foam board. If you need to connect another piece of reflective paper, you want to peel the protective layer of the underneath piece first and then you could stick the other reflective paper on top of that. Once we're done, don't forget to peel off all the reflective paper and then I'll use the X-Acto knife to cut the two pieces in half. To 
to finish the edge of the table, we'll bend our piece right around the wood and glue it in place. And we'll continue like this, filling in all the spaces around the table. After we have finished gluing all of the pieces around the table, we will glue the front of the table in place. And we will glue the strip on the top and the bottom of our table. One nice thing about using the foam board is that you could bend it around the table and glue it in place. After I was finished, I took three of the mirrors from Hobby Lobby and placed them on top of the table. And this is the final result. No one would believe that most of the materials you use on this project came from the Dollar Tree. The entire thing looks so luxurious and elegant. It looks very expensive and it goes so nice with the mirror and the wall sconce. Everything goes together so well. Now if you like this table and it's something that you'd like to try out, let me know in the comments section down below. You know I love hearing from you guys. You guys are so awesome. Now if this is your first time here and you're not yet subscribed, then go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload a new video, if you like videos like this. I love you guys, stay blessed and keep creating. So thanks for taking the time out to watch this video. You have a blessed and awesome day. Now if you like this video, you may also like these as well. See you in the next one.